Let's keep reading. Then comes the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. Or sorry, yeah, the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Has he done that yet? Nope. Because it's all about at his coming. It's not a pre-trib coming. It's his post-trib coming. It's when he's going to be seen as lightning from one end unto the other. Okay? Look at this. When he shall have put down all authority. Listen to this. Verse 25. 1 Corinthians 15, 25. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Well, what do we know about death? Let's go to Isaiah, right? You guys remember this? Isaiah 65. Uh, da -da -da, for behold, all things new. Listen to this. This is during the millennial reign. In fact, let's start in verse 17. For behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth. You see, I create, okay, a new heavens and a new earth. Okay, what does he mean? Fresh new thing. Look at what it means. It doesn't mean what you think. It means to rebuild. It means to rebuild. This is all about when he returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives, destroys the enemy, and he repairs the earth literally says repairs he makes it new by repairing it okay and how do we know listen to what it says we go to verse uh, isaiah 66 verse 20. there shall be no more thence an infant of days nor an old man that has not uh, that, that has not filled his days for the child shall die a hundred years old but the sinner being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. You see? There's still death. For the child shall die a hundred years old. Meaning, as you guys, everybody who's read this, all the pastors that have taught you, they're telling you, you see that in the millennial reign, people will live hundreds of years again as they did in the beginning. And when they do, if a child dies, if somebody dies at a hundred, It'll be as if they were just a child. So what do you see? Death is not yet put under his feet. Which means he has to rule until what? He has to rule until death is put under his feet. You see? For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Well, listen to this. When the end comes, so at his coming, then comes the end, where he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father, and he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign, okay? Which means this is all related then to when he comes in the final year and he establishes his reign during the millennial reign. Can we prove it? Absolutely, we can prove it. I wouldn't be doing the video otherwise. <laughs> I love it. Watch this. Let's go to Matthew 28. Listen to Matthew 28 and the commission he gives them here. If you guys come to understand who the Gospels are speaking to, you're going to see that the last chapter of Luke, Mark, and Matthew are all a commission to separate groups of people in the end of days. Luke 24 is written to what we call the remnant bride. That group that I was saying in the in the Dana Coverstone dream where they needed help. There's not enough workers. OK, they're the ones working in the harvest, but there's not enough workers and they need more to come in. These guys are working. They're with the Lord for 40 days and then they're here during seals. Mark's group at the end of Mark's gospel, it's the ones that Jesus unbraids on. Right. He gives he rails on them. And it relates to the 144,000 who he seals at the beginning, at the end of the sixth year of seals, at the beginning of the seventh. <clears throat> That's why you see it in Revelation chapter 7. You see the 144,000 sealed, 
That's why in Revelation 14, you see them on heavenly Mount Zion with them because the Lord is there now on Mount Zion and they go out during trumpets. But Matthew's group, when you get to Matthew 28, it's a third group because there are these three watchmen group, one for seals, one for trumpets, and one for the millennial reign. Listen to what he tells them. Uh, Matthew 28, 16. This is one of those things that you will see the difference in these patterns within the Gospels and that these commissions are completely different from each other. Where they meet, the words that are said, what they're to do, they're completely different. One, he sits down and eats. The other ones, he doesn't serve and he, and he rails on them. It's completely different. The reason is prophecy was built into the Gospels. And it's everywhere. Well, listen to this. Uh, then the 11th point of the mountain, Matthew 28, starting in 17. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? They worshipped him, but some doubted. Do you know we don't read about some doubted anywhere except in Matthew 28? And one more place, right? Isn't there one more place where some doubted? Right? Isn't there a place where actually one famous one doubted? Like Thomas? Doubting Thomas? Do you know that doubting Thomas is related to John chapter 20 as if it's like right at the end, right? Right. It relates to the very end of the 20th year to the start of the 21st year. It's right when the Lord's returning feet down on the Mount of Olives. Isn't that something? You're going to see as we go through this that it's as the seventh trumpet begins to sound. It hasn't even fully sounded. It's when it's beginning to sound is like between this little line here from the end of 20 to the start of 21 of John, which is the end of the 13th year to the start of the 14th or the end of the sixth year of trumpets to the very beginning of the seventh year of trumpets. Do you think that's interesting? That that's where Doubting Thomas is. And in Matthew, it's in Matthew 28, which is directly, absolutely 100% connected to when the Lord returns at the end of the sixth year of trumpets to the start of the seventh year of trumpets. Do you think that's just by chance? Matthew 28, verse 18, listen to this. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Hello. All power is now being given to him in heaven and in the earth. Some people would say, well, he already has it. In, in the spiritual sense. <clears throat> but not in this literal sense, he doesn't. He's had it in the spiritual. But obviously... Uh, where is that power daily, regularly being played out, right? The enemy is still very victorious right now. When he returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives, ain't no more power over the, for the enemy. All power is given unto him. This is why he then tells them, teach them to observe all things that I command you, right? He's no longer telling them to preach because the whole world will know. And what does he tell them? I am with you now until the end of the world. So here... We see that now all power is given unto him in heaven and in earth. Well, let's go to Revelation. Go to Revelation, where is it? Uh, chapter 11. Chapter 11, and what do we get? We get to the end of the sixth trumpet, which is the second woe. And look at what it says at the seventh trumpet when it sounds. There were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That doesn't happen till the seventh trumpet. What's the seventh trumpet? The beginning of the final year of trumpets. When he puts down all rule and all reign and all authority, when it's lightning from one end unto the other, when the whole world will see him. These are all directly connected 
to 1 Corinthians 15 related to precisely what he said that but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end. Yes, the literal end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. 